Welcome back everyone to the Hell World guys. This is another episode of the Better C++ SFML Advanced Game Series and in this video we are going to get started actually creating the Mario class. So as you can see I have created a basic Mario class here with a position and an angle assigned to their default values. And uh, in the map the PNG you can see that we have got a red pixel here that is supposed to represent where Mario is supposed to spawn. So in order to actually tell that what we can do is we can make this create from image method not be void but instead return a uh, vector to that's going to tell us where we are supposed to position Mario so we will just do that and of course we'll need to go under map.cpp as well and change the signature here uh, so that it doesn't give it an error and uh, if we do that uh, yeah that should work and now what we need to do is we just need to uh, assign it uh, this position to the correct uh, place and then render it correctly so what we are going to do is uh, let's just go ahead and say sf colon colon uh, something like vector 2f and let's say Mario position uh, and let's uh, just leave it like that and uh, uh, now let's go and add another else statement here and if the color is equal to red then that means that we are supposed to actually uh, you know put Mario there so what we'll do is we'll say uh, but just copy this function that we uh, this is uh, you know statement that we use for calculating the position of where we are supposed to draw it because we only have got the x and y in the actual grid coordinate so what you need to do is convert that to world coordinates and then set mario position to that and of course in the end we must not forget to return this mario position and of course just put an initializer list uh, initializer up there so that it initializes it to the default and if uh, this pixel is not present mario will just be spawned at zero zero so uh, let's go here and uh, test stuff out so uh, let's go under game.cpp and uh, we are going to create a mario here of course a variable that we want of course to the uh, player to be so let's say mario and call that uh, mario quite obviously and of course we'll need to include the header file or else it won't be able to detect where we are getting the mario from and now all we need to do is um, uh, set mario dot position to whatever this map dot create from image returns so let's set it to that and now we are going to actually remove this camera dot position function and in the update method let's just go ahead and say uh, camera dot position is equal to mario dot position because the camera should always be focused at the mario or the player and of course this is uh, a mario themed game but you can adopt it to any kind of game and let's go under mario and add an update method here we are not going to add any other methods just yet we'll add everything just when we need it so let's create a float delta time here and create an update method in here uh, and of course we'll need to implement that in mario.cpp and uh, for the actual implementation we're just going to implement that basic movement thing that we had so let's go here and uh, uh, yeah let's just copy all of those statements go under mario.cpp paste that let's go under game.cpp and copy all of that code because of course we can do this from anywhere in any file so let's go ahead and add all of that and once we have done that we are going to of course not do camera.position but just do position because we are changing mario's actual position and we'll need to change that const float movement speed to actual mario.cpp so that we actually have it here and uh, yes that's quite nice and uh, now what we can do is uh, go under uh, yeah let's go under mario uh, game.cpp again and call this actual method so before updating the camera's position we are going to call mario dot uh, update and of course we need to pass the delta time to it and uh, now uh, if everything works like it did before then that means that we have got our mario completely implemented and if anything is out of place that means it's uh, not working quite obviously and uh, you can see that it does position vertically where we expected Mario to be and we can move left and right which means that the basic part of this code is working so now let's actually try drawing Mario so for that let's just go under mario.h and uh, implement another method and by the way I'm going to implement up and down movement as well just change this x to y and uh, uh, yeah just uh, like that it's <laughs> not that difficult and let's change this to up and change that left one to down so all of that should cause Mario to move up and down as well now and of course for the actual movement we'll need to implement first of all a method like draw or render and uh, let's say void render and of course this will require a renderer to actually render too and uh, we will of course need to include the header just to pretty normal stuff. So once we do that uh, we should be able to implement this method and we are of course going to draw the mario.png that we are loading in the resources make sure you have got that in the resources slash textures folder and now let's say render.draw and uh, for the actual texture let's just say 
uh, resources and column column textures and of course we'll need to include Rex resources here so uh, you can see that IntelliSense is not actually detecting the resources uh, any quick actions so it's not really working let's just do it manually real quick not that big of a problem so let's include resources to h of course and uh, let's go ahead and get the textures and let's get mario.png here so just say mario.png uh, and uh, let's go ahead and say position and uh, uh, also pass in for the size I'm just going to say sf column column vector 2f let's say 16 by 32 since mario is in the big posture so when mario is like uh, powered up in the picture I've got so it's uh, like twice as large on the y-axis so we need to make sure this is 32 and that is 16 so that uh, the thing does not appear squished so now let's try run, uh, running it and uh, of course you need to make sure you have actually called the mario.draw method here but and I renamed this to draw because since we are using draw for map you should also use draw for mario and you can see mario is being drawn but not correctly uh, you can see that mario is kind of uh, just uh, wrongly it's in only the top half of his body is showing and the left of it is completely out of the window and uh, uh, one more thing you might notice is that uh, the uh, up and out movement is uh, inverted and uh, you need to because we are using a different kind of coordinate system what we need to make sure is that uh, uh, when you are moving Mario in here uh, you need to make sure that you when we are moving up we need to subtract and when we are moving down then we need to add so yes uh, uh, make sure that you've got that implemented correctly and uh, here we are telling the size correctly but why is it not displaying the correct size so the reason is that in this here you can see that set textures take a reset rect which is by default set to false what this means is that when we pass it the first texture uh, texture it sets the rectangle of the texture so that rectangle the area of the texture that's going to be drawn it sets that to the whole of the texture but when you set the new texture it keeps that you know, from the previous one so only the 16 by 16 part shows which means only half of Mario body uh, is actually shown we need to make sure that we s tell it to reset the rect whenever we need uh, to set a new texture and uh, we need to make sure that's implemented in our renderer and once we do that and uh, let's just close this as well and in here uh, we have basically got it implemented and now what you should see is that we do indeed get a complete Mario in our scene with the correct size and we can also move around the scene like that you can see that we can move Mario around and uh, the camera will follow him and it all looks pretty decent uh, overall of course currently we can move Mario through walls and everything else so yeah we'll need to kind of of course implement some physics and movement and gravity and stuff like that in the future videos for now uh, I'm going to end this video here I'll see you in the next one in which we'll uh, try to actually implement some uh, <laughs> logic uh, logics for when Mario can move and when he cannot so uh, that we'll do that by implementing a physics engine of some sort so make sure to stay tuned for that i'll see you in the next one and make sure to like and subscribe as well and uh, bye